So again, one of the things that mathematicians like to do after we've defined something, in this particular case a matrix, uh, what we want to be able to do is then to be able to do things to them. And so we have the basic row and column operations. So given some matrix M, we'll define the row and column operations on a matrix as follows. So these three basic row and column operations are N, back and forth rm, that's a double arrow. Uh, this just means to switch the nth and mth rows. And similarly, I can talk about switching the nth and mth columns. So something else I can do, krn to rn, that means what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply every entry in the nth row by k, and I'm going to replace the original values in that row. And again, similarly, I can do the same thing column-wise. A uh, quick note here, this is a right arrow because we read from left to right, and this is fairly standard for mathematicians. Uh, if you are reading a book that's geared towards computer scientists or uh, people in other fields, uh, they may actually use the left arrow notation, and so they'll reverse this. They'll be K-R-N, left arrow, R-N, and it means the same thing, but the notation is not standardized. And then finally, we can do something a little bit more complicated, krn plus rm to rm. I'm going to take the nth row, multiply it by k, I'm going to add it to the mth row, and I'm going to drop all of the new values back into the mth row. So my mth row has disappeared. And again, similarly, we can do the same thing for columns. And typically when we write these, what we'll have is we'll have our original matrix, I'll have a right arrow, and then above or below or someplace close to it, I'll have some description of what row or column operation I did, and then my new matrix. So for example, uh, say I want to apply the row operation R3 switch with R2 to my matrix M. So I'm going to interchange the second and third rows, so M, the original matrix, becomes, when I switch the second and third rows, well, the second and third rows are switching, but that means the first row is not going to change, so I'll leave that, and I'll just switch the place of my second and third row. So my second row is going to be the 0, 0, 3, 1, and then my third row is going to be 1, 4, negative 3, 1. Well, let's apply a different operation. So I'll apply the row operation 3R2, send it to R2. So I'm going to multiply the R2, multiply the second row, everything in the second row by 3, and I'm going to replace the second row with what I just obtained. Again, because I've done that, first row and third row don't change, so I'll go ahead and keep those. So only my second row is changing, my first row is the same, my second row is the same, and I do want to multiply that second row by 3 and drop it into the third row. So I'm going to multiply each of the entries in that second row by 3, so that's going to give me 3. 4 times 3 is 12, negative 3 times 3 is 9, 1 times 3 is 3, and there's my new matrix. And again, maybe a little bit more complicated row operation, minus 3R2 plus R1 gets sent to R1, and I'm going to apply that to my matrix M. So again, R1 changes, R2 and R3 stay exactly the same. So I can copy those down. So I'm going to multiply the entries in row 2 by 3. I'm going to add those to row 1, and I'm going to replace the new values in row 1. And it's helpful to do this in stages. Minus 3R2, I'm going to take my second row multiply everything in it by 3, so my entries are going to be 3, negative 3 times the first entry in row 2, negative 3 times 1, otherwise known as negative 3, negative 3 times my second entry, that's 4, negative 3 times my third entry, and negative 3 times my last entry. So there's, there is minus 3r2, I want to add the corresponding entries in row 1, so that's going to be I'm going to add 3, 0, negative 1, and 2. And when I add those, I get 0, negative 12, 8, and negative 1. So here's my values, minus 3R2 plus R1. And I'm going to take these, and I'm going to drop these into row 1. So again, row 1 changes, row 2 and row 3. Nothing happens to them, so I'm going to keep them. Row 2, row 3, and then my entries 0, negative 1, uh, 8, and negative 1. 